Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. A man in a suit enters a bar, written by Echoing Cascade. Orion was a proud owner of the bar Memento Mori, a death world's only dive situated in the seediest part of the seediest block of Stross Prime. Only three kinds of people went anywhere near it. Death Wilders looking for a taste of home, people who dealt with Death Wilders, and accidental Death Seekers. When he saw the small, suit-wearing human head to the bar, Orion assumed that he was the third kind that was about to call for a clean-up on aisle 3, 4, and 5, which was a running joke from the previous human owner, when something unhappened. The entire bar froze. Orion was confused, to say the least. It was a bar where predators throughout the sector came for food and drink that was outlawed in polite society, due in no small part to the lethality to other species, where a spill of drink usually led to brawls and where dying was par for the course. Jonas Torn, one of the regulars, got up from his seat, left his prepared card on the table, and all but ran out the back door. This is a man that had more scar tissue than fresh skin on his face, had enough metal in his body to pass for a power loader. He'd seen the human eat a bottle of absinthe after downing enough beer to kill everyone else in the bar, then call out thirty or so scrotro insectoids that made fun of him and killed them with his bare hands in a back alley. John Smith, another regular, a smooth customer and a strong silent type lifted his hand and called Trissy, his favorite waitress, and asked for his bill. He paid, whispering something in her ear, and they both left together. They gave a wide berth to the small man and left through the front door. Moments later, Trissy sent Orion a message. Gotta go, family emergency. After John left, nearly everyone else liked it. Not that he blamed him. The man often showed up to buy drinks for everyone after a famous individual had died in a mysterious circumstances. All he ever asked in exchange for his generosity was that they all remembered that he'd been drinking and eating with them for many, many hours. If the unhospitable brute and the hired assassin left, it could only mean one thing. Orion looked at the little man. He had not moved after walking into the middle of the bar. That thing is, is a lawyer. Orion was too worried. For all that went on in his bar, he himself was squeaky clean. Orion, what can I offer you, stranger? The man looked at the barman and composed eyes and sat in front of him. Small man. A root beer. Orion served him his drink while polishing another with his dorsal arms. The man took the courteous sip and then a large one. Small man. Not bad. The man then paid for his drink. Orion, so um, what brings you to my establishment, business or pleasure? The small man lifted a right hand, which bit down the middle, revealing a metallic parts. A soft click, click, clank was heard, and a business card popped out of his wrist. His hand then reformed and caught the card midair. Orion was impressed, though it was the only one. After this little show, a few curious customers left decided it was time to go. Small man. Business, I am afraid. He then handed the card to the barkeep. Orion read the card. And then his camouflage reflex activated. Oh, God, he's not a lawyer. The small man opened his briefcase and took out several folders. Small man, we found some discrepancies while looking at your file. Orion dropped the car to the ground. Intergalactic revenue service could be read on it. He was so much worse. End of story. Story number two. Home Cooking, written by Hell's Kitchen Sink. You don't meet many majors who cook, said the captain. You don't meet many mercenaries who blacksmith, I said, as I pricked over the mushrooms, carefully studying them. But I bet they're your favorites. Is it safe to be here, he said, frowning as he shifted in his chainmail shirt, eyeing one of the nearby boulders. The slightest hint of face was still visible on it. It is a very weak rift. You would have to spend months, years here, to even show the first signs of disanguinea. Or eat one of these. I held up a mushroom, a brown cap with lily-white gills beneath it, a large brown spot on it. 
You see this, don't you? Prepared with reduction of balsamic vinegar to temper the ossifying effects of terra sanguina, and a quick sear to drive out the parasites, and it can either make a hearty dish that gives your skin the strength of stone without the same stiffness, or a potent source of terra sanguina for someone of my skills. I sniffed it. And with a little spicing, it makes an excellent appetizer. He eyed my paunch. I see. I'm prepared, and, well, I waved a hand at the boulder. If you're lucky, you make an attractive piece of sculpture. And if you're unlucky, a contract to a parasite, then everyone you meet becomes very unlucky. Magic is nasty stuff when you don't know what you're doing. I lick my lips hungry. Any good with that bow? Extremely said the captain, looking around. Something wrong? No, I'm just thinking a bit of venison would be perfect main course to go with this. There's a deer run through here. What the hell do they eat if it's so dangerous here? They are more accustomed to the elemental rifts. They change over time. We could too, if you don't mind growing the stone crust over your skin and gradually being driven mad by the whispers of parasites that you might contract. It strikes me that your tastes are a bit dangerous, mage said the captain. He slipped off to the path and into the brush. He unhooked a large bow from his back and drew the bowstring out of a pouch at his waist. With a tremendous effort, he strung the bow, breathing heavily. I mean, I'm not even paying you. Some city majors are content to accept for the food grown on gentle lands, to eat that which is safe and reliable. But power is rarely safe or reliable. The wild mage's life is for those that don't mind adventure. Besides, have you ever had smoked venison with grilled chanterellas in balsamic reduction? Now, um, aim for the eye. I'm a good shot, but it is I, said the captain, frowning as he studied the track, stilling himself. I sat beside him, my legs crossing, leaning back against the rock as I studied the herbs around us. I reached out and grabbed a few red peppers, smoked. They would make a spicy addition to the mushrooms and provide a useful sauce for the ichnus sanguina. Make sure to hit a dead center. They gorge themselves in stone tears. Oh, uh, so they're tough, he asked, frowning. And violent. It'll be an unpleasant fight if you don't get it in first shot. Oh, come on now, it's a deer, said the captain, as the ground shook slightly beneath us. How, oh, um, uh, hard, um. He fell silent as the creature appeared out of the darkness. Only five feet tall at the shoulder, its skin was the color of marble. Its body, immensely muscled despite the delicate hooves, jagged crags rose from its scalp, like a mountain range atop its head. Ten points. Black eyes slowly swiveled as it walked, each footstep sending a tremor through the land around us. The captain swallowed and knocked his bow, drawing. The trench smoker puffed merrily. We'd cut the wood from down by the swamp, and its blue-hued flesh, while difficult to light, was very smoky, and smelled faintly of salt. It cracked and hissed as new logs were occasionally added. I opened the chimney and grinned. The buck lay within, the marble white flesh now a mottled sooty grey. Yes, see, I said, as I began to slice strips and quartered and dressed carcass. The aquain sanguini in the woods serves a dual purpose, both lessening the expression of terra sanguini to make the meat tender enough that you won't break a tooth on it, and keeping it particularly moist. The cooking process eliminates parasites, and the particular flavors of smoke add some delicious caramelization to file process. Plenty of proteins and fats, all the things you need to keep you on your feet all day. As an added bonus, it adds hydration and stiffens your muscle fibers, making you stronger and giving you a greater endurance and a variable cornucopia of free sanguinea. For one like myself, I licked my lips as I handed one of the plates over to the captain. The rest of the squad of mercenaries crowded around as I served them out one after another. Before we sat in a circle, I speared one of the mushrooms with my knife and bit in. It was rich, salty, tart, the flavor meaty thanks to the dripping juices of the venison. The dexter smooth and yielding, almost buttery. The spice of the peppers brought tears to my eyes. I fanned myself, sweat prickling my brow as I enjoyed the rough heat. We're nearly out to the town of Parworth. They'll be needing the supplies we're bringing. Apparently they've had a crop failure, said the captain. Oh, I said, frowning. 
I hope they haven't yet reached famine conditions, I looked around us. This is one of the more unstable parts of the continent. If people begin to live off the land, well, they don't have the education to make sure the items are prepared safely, or to know which ones are safe to eat. Aye, that's why we've got you and the squad of armed mercenaries, said the captain, in case they've been, uh, living off the land. He nodded at me. Obviously, we can't compel you to help out, but... A wild mage is always at service, I said, nodding stiffly. Besides, I owe you. I took a bite out of the juicy, smoked venison, licking my lips. Strings of muscles parted easily, the long, smoking process breaking it down until you could have cut it with a spoon. The rich and gamey flavor made all the more satisfying by the hints of salt and sweet from the smoke. I felt my body surge with the rush of sanguine skin, barely crackling as the Terran and Aquian energies roiled inside, practically begging to be used now that they'd been cleansed. You did catch a deer for me, after all. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astraea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.